to the few of you that are still listening, welcome back to Approved Unto God. <laughs> We're in Proverbs chapter number 30 today, and uh, last time we were talking about Agur, last two times, and uh, we were talking about the perfection of the Word of God, we were talking about how he was brutish, and he did not claim to have any understanding, but yet God revealed great truths to him, and then also the prayer, or the demands he made of God, that God would remove from him vanity and lies not just remove but far remove <laughs> and he did not want poverty or riches he wanted to be right in the middle and we're going to keep going this is still the words of agar which is the words of god words every word of god is pure you know that every word is in this book you have not been shortchanged. You have everything God wants you to know. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. We can trust that. It is our bread. It is our food, our spiritual food to to help us to, to if, we, if we reap unto the spirit, we shall of the spirit reap eternal life. Eternal life is quality of life. Eternal life is knowing God the Father and knowing the Son. You cannot know God aside from his word. You have the word of God, and if you sow to the spirit, spiritual things, Jesus said in John chapter number 10 that uh, when he talked about eating his flesh and drinking his blood, but then it turned a lot of people off and many went away and quit following him. But to those who remain, to those who still stuck around, he revealed the truth that the spirit quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. You get more abundant life through the word. If you sow to the spirit, the word of God, you will of the spirit reap eternal life. A better quality of knowing God and the son. A better fellowship, a better walk. And on the other hand, if you sow to the flesh, you're gonna of the flesh reap corruption and I do believe and I'm uh, I've been meditating on this a little bit <laughs> just knowing myself and and I believe that we're all the same all flesh is grass that the longer I live and the longer and 42 years of sowing to my flesh certain sins certain sins that I have not overcome I have reaped what I've sown I've reaped the wind and I've sown the whirlwind so it's bigger it, it builds up just like shower soap scum will build up if you do not clean it off well the thing is n <laughs> that which is born of the flesh is flesh but we are expected to bathe ourselves in the Word of God but I, I, I see an accumulation and a building up of sin and and I feel like in the flesh I am worse than I've ever been. I feel like in my flesh, left unchecked, the sowing and sowing and sowing through all the years sin has made me in the flesh much worse than I was last year, the year before, when I was twenty, when I was ten. I mean and in the same sense, the more I've sown to the Spirit, in the Spirit, I am that much more closer to God. I am that much more holy. I am that much more in love with God and hate sin. I despise it. There's two natures, and we're sowing to one or the two every moment of our life. And God would expect us to sow to the Spirit so that we can of the Spirit reap that quality of life that he would have us to have. So with that in mind, let's go into verse number, where did I leave off? Verse number 10. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. There is a generation that curseth their father, and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. 
There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters, crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not, it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith it is enough, that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother, the ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Father, Lord, please bless your word. Please speak through me. Please help me to be a blessing to others, God. Help me to create a better quality of life if people would receive the word of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Accuse not a servant unto his master, lest he curse thee, and thou be found guilty. You know, oftentimes we can be false accusers. Oftentimes people left to themselves without anything to do will be busybodies. And God expects us to bless others, not accuse and to try to destroy lives. Because the Son of Man didn't come to destroy, but to save lives. And the thief cometh not, and I said this last time, but for to steal and to kill and to, de to destroy. But Jesus has come that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And we got to remember that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. And we are not to be accusers. We are to be those that build up and lift up. And yes, sometimes we have to call out sin in not just our lives, but in other people's lives. But there has to be the leading of the Spirit. We cannot just do this in our flesh. But when you do this in the flesh, you're in danger. You're in danger of what? Accuse not a servant unto his master lest he curse thee and thou, thou be found guilty. You know, one day, each and every one of us that are servants of God, that are saved by the grace of God, will give an account of himself to God. And we are not to usurp, to usurp, I don't know how to say that word, use syrup, use syrup, <laughs> authority over other men's lives when they have to give an account to their master. They are God's uh, servant and, and I am God's servant and we have to be careful that we are not trying to dictate in other men's lives as if we are the master of that person but every one of us Paul said will give an account of himself unto God and who are you that judgeth another man's servant and you know that you may have to stand before God I believe that's what this is saying here. Lest the person that you accuse curse thee and you be found guilty. Guilty before who? Guilty before the only one that really truly matters, before God. Would you like to stand in a courtroom setting knowing that you are accusing brethren when God says he hates him that sows discord among the brethren? and you are an accuser as Satan is an accuser, you divide, you bite, you devour, you break down the church of God, and the whole time you think you're right, but one day you'll stand before the judge, and the judge will clear up all these matters. You may, with your personality, persuade others. You, with your personality, may gain the favor of others to your side of a situation but you have to realize that you will be held to give an account of your statements your words everything you say can and will be held against you in a court of law this is going to be a law setting and we have to be very careful about making false accusations especially against the household of the faith, especially against God's people, because God is not going to hold you uh, guiltless for that. He will hold you accountable. Why? Because he's written it. He's written it here in his word. 
He says, be careful before you go around accusing. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. So we see Agur and we see the prophecy given to Agur. Why? Because he is a man that is brutish, a man that hath not the understanding of a man. He has not went to Bible college. He is not learned. He says he doesn't even have the knowledge of the holy, but yet because of that, God reveals great things to him. He reveals to him the God of creation and what is his son's name. And Brother Joe preached on this in the jail, and I missed it. You know what? I do believe that his son's name is Jesus, and he shall be called Emmanuel. But you know, when God was there as the person of the son in the creation, and as he spoke the worlds into existence, the Bible says in John chapter number one, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And in Revelation that his name is called the word of God. So uh, brother Joe pointed out in the next verse, he answers, what is his son's name? Every word of God is pure. His name is the word of God. And I didn't see that. And I just thought that was a blessing. And I was listening attentively knowing that I don't have it all figured out. I don't see everything. And God reveals some things to others that he doesn't reveal to us. And it's such a blessing to, to gain understanding from different saints. Pay close attention when other people speak. Don't just think about what you're going to say, but you have to realize that you can be taught of all men. Even pay attention when lost people speak, but because sometimes God will interject some words that you need to hear. You know, one time I was sitting in a, I don't know if I really wanted to go here, but I was sitting in a bar as a backslidden Christian. And I felt guilty and I felt ashamed and I felt like I wanted to hide in the dark bar. And I was with another Christian and I, and I don't know, I hope he's saved. Um, but we were in a discussion. There was a guy sitting at the booth with us that was a not a not a atheist but an agnostic he believed there could be a god but that really you can't prove one way or another and that they need proof but he leaned i thought towards not believing in god but then not that night as i told him that i was backslidden and that god called me to preach and that god wants or once used me this guy says, you know what? You can't hide from God. He says, you know what? You're here in this dark bar trying to get away and trying to hide from God. But, you know, he sees you. And he says, you need to get right. You need to uh, get back following this God that you believe in. And I believe that God would have me to say this. You know what? And this guy that's an agnostic reproved me because I believe God spoke through him. And I needed to hear those words, and they were words of wisdom. They were words that helped me to get back on track eventually. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. So here we see a prophecy of a generation that we are living in today. The generation where women rule over men, and that there is a curse of being ruled by women, and there is also... Uh, a curse with the children being the oppressors now the children are the oppressors there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother never before have we seen such a generation that would throw their own mother and father to the authorities that would turn their own mother and father in and would rat on their own father and mother against a crooked government it would cause them to be locked up they have no respect for for those that brought them life and you know why they do not have any respect or any fear of god who is the ultimate giver of life there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet they think they're right this woke crowd they think they're right they think they're righteous they think they're righteous as they curse and 
swear and 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 speak ill of their father or their mother who are Christians and they'll post it all over and they're not ashamed to speak that way there used to be generations that may have nothing good to say about their parents but they wouldn't broadcast it as this generation there is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and they think they're right they think they're holy they think they're they're cool with God they think that God will just sweep it all under the rug and that there's really nothing wrong with them they can see the wrong with the government they can see the wrong with uh, you know all these different conspiracies they, they can they can see these things but they don't see that they're filthy in their own uh, in, in the eyes of God they are filthy they it, but in their own eyes they're clean but they're not washed from their filthiness are you washed from your filthiness there's only one way to be washed from our filthiness and that is in the blood of the lamb Jesus blood can cleanse the deepest stains of sin it can make the crimson white as snow you know though our sins be as crimson they shall be made white as snow though they be uh, <laughs> there is a generation pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness there is a generation that believes that mom and dad and grandma and grandpa that their religion is foolishness and that now the religion of the day is science but yet what about your sin you may believe in science but what are you going to do about your sin who's going to wash you from your sins who is going to cleanse you and make you fit for the kingdom of god who is going to make you holy because without holiness no man shall see god you cannot see god in your filthiness because you have to understand that what's pure in your eyes or what's highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination unto God you are not washed from your filthiness you could be washed today you could if you would seek out the Lord if you seek him you shall find him but not too many are looking more are looking on the internet for entertainment more are looking for conspiracy theories more are looking for the latest news in politics you know they have a political stance but yet they will not stand on the word of God there is a generation we're living in that generation we're living in the generation that is described at, in, in the book of Jude there is a generation oh how lofty are their eyes they lift their eyes up they will not bow down their eyelids they will not bow down their heads in humility to the holy God but they will bow their heads to look at their cell phone <laughs> face plant they will plant their face in their phone all day there is a generation oh how lofty are their eyes and their eyelids are lifted up full of pride just like Satan and remember it was the sin of pride that caused Satan to fall and if you will follow in the footsteps of Satan God will cause you to fall God resisteth the proud but he giveth grace unto the humble we need the grace of God this generation needs the grace of God and they are not gonna get it with lofty eyelids they are not gonna get it thinking highly of themselves they will be critical of God they would be quick to judge God when he is the judge of all the earth God is not going to stand and give an account to you you are going to stand before God and give an account to him but this generation reverses it and flips it around back on God they think that they would be a better God had they been given the position but you have not been given that position I know you feel entitled to it but you are a generation that is filthy you are a generation that is lost you are a generation that even cursed the mom and dad that brought you into this world and the God that light of every man that cometh into the world there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men 
those that cannot advantage them, they would be well to destroy. They will bite and devour. They would chew up and spit out their own family. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, those upper teeth, their <laughs> the longer teeth. You got those two front teeth that are long like swords and their jaw teeth as knives. The little teeth are shorter to devour. That's They use the teeth not to devour food, though there is a gluttonous generation, but they use their teeth to bite and devour the poor or those that cannot bring anything to them where they could gain advantage. And they would rid the earth of the poor. They would rid the earth of the Jew. They would rid the earth of the Christian. They would rid the earth of those that don't see eye to eye with them. That's this generation. <laughs> you know, they will cancel you if you don't agree with their agenda. Cancel culture. They will destroy you and your family if you don't go along with the narrative. That's all that matters to them is the narrative. Being accepted in this world, but they don't care to be accepted in the kingdom of God. They don't care to be accepted of God. I want to find myself acceptable to God. How? By having Jesus kiss his son lest he be angry. By leaning not upon my own understanding, but believing the word of God. God, he seeks those that, that think this way. The horse leech have two daughters. Two daughters crying, give, give. The entitled generation. We want reparations for our forefathers who were slaves, says the black community. What's their motive? Do they really care that, <laughs> did it really affect them? Did they really lose sleep over the slave trade that took place in this early, early on in this country? No, but they feel entitled. If there's any way they can get a dollar from the government, they will find a way. If there's any way that they can mooch off the government, they will find a way. The horse leech have two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied, yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave and the barren womb, the earth that is not filled with water and a fire that saith it is, saith not it is enough. I always have trouble saying that. But you know, though this generation is never satisfied, you always have to have the next best cell phone. You always have to have the next big TV. You always have to have the latest in technology. You got to keep up with all that because you're never satisfied. And whenever they say free phone, you're first one in line. But why are they giving away expensive free phones like these iPhones? How much of that has to do with tracking you and uh, trying to set up that, that beast system I don't know I'm not going to get too deep into all that but but it's funny though how they will use their own fleshly lust to destroy them the horse leech have two daughters the horse leech multiplies the horse leech has children that are needier than they are that are more entitled than they are that cry give give more than the original generation of horse leech there are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not, and it is enough. The grave. But you know that the grave, the graveyards, it's always a boom in business. People are always dying. They have never shut down a graveyard because not enough people are dying. You know, I know that now science believes that they can make people immortal. They can make people, or, or, or put the soul of a person or the memory of a person or the information gathered from the internet of a person into a robot and that your consciousness would dwell in a robot but yet your body is still going to die it's going to go in a grave and the grave is never full it it, it it receives and receives and receives ever since man sinned in the garden 
death by sin has fallen on this world and the very fact that you're a sinner uh, excuse me the very fact that you die proves the fact that you are a sinner because sin bringeth forth death and the grave is not ever satisfied and the barren womb the barren womb you know the the wish of a barren womb is to have a child the wish of a woman who is barren is to have many children but not in this generation this generation kills the child out of the womb this generation is so promiscuous that it regularly regularly kills and, and destroys the life that God brings to the womb and they are not ashamed of it they lift up their eyelids they they are a generation that is pure in their own eyes you know what their cause to pass abortion laws is pure in their in their eyes and for you to fight against it for you to be pro-life they think that you're filthy they think that you're defiled they think that your god is defiled the barren womb the earth that is not filled with water and the earth is filled with water but it can never be filled enough you know that rain happens quite regular <laughs> regularly i have a hard time with that word it rains regularly there we go but you know that the earth is never full all the rivers go down to the ocean in the book of ecclesiastes yet the sea is never full it cannot ever be full enough and the fire that saith it, it is saith not it is enough it's funny how easy it is to read the word of god and miss things and skip over things and the fire that saith not it is enough and i keep reading it wrong it is not enough i read it wrong again and you know hellfire is unquenchable you know like the burning bush that bush was never consumed of the fire and God is a consuming fire but yet the soul of man will not be consumed that soul of man is eternal because it was created by an eternal God and that lake of fire that you are headed for if you have not believed upon the name of the only begotten son of God you will never burn up you will never and that fire will never say it's enough I I don't know I, I, I it freaks me out to know that that God's judgment is so strong and is so severe but yet people take it so lightly eternal punishment because your sin is against an eternal God also that which is filthy and we're talking about being filthy this generation that which is filthy let them be filthy still and through the eons of eternity you will remain filthy that's why when the wicked are released out of hell they are not given a second chance they are not repentant because that which is filthy let them be filthy still also the spirit has been removed the one part of man that is lighted that is makes it possible for you to communicate with God now it's your soul without the spirit no communication with God so whatever you were when you died which was filthy every man is filthy without Christ you remain that way if you're selfish you remain selfish if you're bitter you remain bitter if you're angry you remain angry if you're a murderer you remain a murderer you don't repent you don't change your heart you never change your mind hmm. and the fire is not quenched the fire does not say it is it is enough saith not it is enough therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure and their pomp I always want to say pomp and circumstance but their pomp their their they're the ones that are proud. They're the ones that lift up their eyelids. They're the ones that say, I'm pure. Those are the ones that descend into it. And God never runs out of room. He doesn't say, okay, that's it. We're full. 
No, he expands hell for this generation. And it's the last generation before the coming of the Lord. I do believe it is. But you know that there will be a generation that will come in the millennial reign that will see Christ on the throne, that will see the peace on earth. They will not experience Satan tempting them. Satan will be bound. His presence is gone. But then yet they will still, they will still end up being the type that, that hates God, that as soon as Satan is released, they are duped into following him in rebellion to overthrow Jesus Christ and the saints. And hell and a lake of fire will, will gladly welcome them. <laughs> the eye that mocketh at his father and despises to obey his mother. Their eyes mock, their eyes wander, their eyes will not receive instruction. Their eyes, remember the eyelids that are lifted up, their eyelids speak of the inside, that they're lifted up with pride. Their eyelids say they're pure. Their eyelids say, I'm right, mom and dad, you're wrong. God, you're wrong. The Bible's wrong and I'm right. <laughs> they despise their mother, their father. They will not obey their father, their mother, and they despise ultimately God and they will not obey God because that's the authority that they have been given by God. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out. What? The eyes. We're talking about those that lift up their eyelids. Soon those eyes will be removed. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. And I don't know if this is prophetic, possibly even of that millennial reign, where if you are guilty of such a crime in God's uh, system, in God's world system, which is a system of righteousness, maybe that would be the punishment. Maybe those ravens are obedient to pluck the eyes of such out of their head and then the eagles you know they're scavengers or they'll, they'll oftentimes steal from other birds and then the eagles will eat it pretty gruesome but you know what sin is gruesome you know, what sin will do to you and what it will do to others and what it will do to your soul is gruesome there be three things which are too wonderful for me. Okay, we're, we're going to stop there. We'll, we will try to go into some of these wonderful things next time when we meet. And uh, I hope you can stick around and stay with me. And, and I hope that you're getting something out of the Word of God here. And I know that I'm not the smoothest talker. I'm not the smartest man, you know. I'm just like Ager. I'm just a guy that is unlearned. Uh, I, I don't know much. I'm brutish. I know that. But uh, I want to gain understanding from God. I want to teach it to others. And I want to glorify and magnify the Lord and his word. And if you're on par with that and you're on board with that, then why don't you join me again next time? This has been Approved Unto God. God bless you. Amen.